Hello everyone, Dom here and today the reason why my t-shirt is changing color is because after a long wait, Cubase 13 has dropped and I'm gonna show you everything that's new. Let's check it out. As you might expect, I'm extremely excited today to make this video and share with you what's new in the brand new Cubase version, Cubase 13. I wanna say straight away that in this video, I'm going to show you as many new things that exist in Cubase 13 as possible. But because I don't want to make this video two hours long, I'm going to go quickly through them. I'm going to show you what you can expect from this new update and then I'm going to make dedicated videos for each feature so make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell notification icon otherwise you will not know if I upload those videos, okay? So let's not waste any time, let's dive into the new features. Number one is the new Mix Console. The Mix Console in Cubase 13 has been redesigned and you will see it straight away. You will notice it straight away when you open it. It looks more sharp, it looks more modern, it looks more fresh. In my opinion, this was something that was needed and I'm very glad that we have a new look in the Mix Console. But the new design is not the only thing that you will find in the Mix Console. In my opinion, I've made a video about this in the the past, the Cubase mixer has the best ergonomics when it comes to serious mixing. I'm not talking about gimmicky mixing, I'm talking about serious mixing that serious mixing engineers would appreciate. Now this has become even better and I'm going to show you very quickly uh, what's new and what you can expect. To begin with, like I said, you know, everything is a little bit more unified, everything looks a little bit more clean, but here are some things that make a big difference in my opinion. First of all, you will see that we have the channel name in the bottom of the channel, but also at the top right here. So this is very useful, especially if you're trying to tweak the EQs, you're trying to tweak your pre-gain and all these things. It's way more easy to have your channel name right there. This is ergonomics, right? It seems like a small thing, but to me, it's very important. The second thing is if you're using the channel strip, now you can see the channel strip right here. So let's say I wanna use a compressor to this vocal, I can go and select my tube compressor, and you will see that now, when I open my tube compressor, I can see the interface like this, it pops up. And when I'm done with it, it just disappears. So I don't have to keep opening these modules, you know, one by one and taking real estate on my mix console. I think this is a very, very cool redesign, especially if you're using the channel strip and you should be using the channel strip. I have a video about the channel strip if you don't know what it does. The other big improvement, in my opinion, is that now this EQ view, check it out what you can do. Not only it has all the bands and you can do your EQing very quickly, but you also have the filters now that was that was missing in the previous mix console and I could never understand why. Now it's here and you also have the pre-gain and we also have the phase reversal and see what happened? Once I move my mouse away, it disappears, which is again, ergonomics. This will allow me to work really, really fast when I'm mixing because EQing is one of the things that you do on almost every channel. And when you can do this, fly between different channels and do your pre-gain, your automation, everything is going to be super easy. The other thing that you will see is that if you've watched a video about the 20 reasons why the Cubase mixer is the best, I show you some tricks there. Now the setup of the mixer is way more simplified. So if you go here to this cogwheel, you will see that everything that comprises the modularity of the Cubase mixer is right there and you can start modifying it exactly how you want. So you don't have to open several places to find all these little things. And last but not least, you can customize the mixer even more now. So you will see I have this configuration, routing, pre, section, insert, strip, EQ and sense. If I want to change the order of these modules, I can right click and I can set up the sections. And now let's say if I want my pre-gain to be first, I can just move it, drag and drop, and I can rearrange the mixer exactly how I want and see it updates in real time. Now the second thing I want to show you is something that I know that many people are going to have a party when they see that this is available in Cubase. And this is that you can now turn any mono channel to stereo or stereo to mono in one click. So let's take this back in vocal, for example. As you can see, it's a mono channel. Now, if I want to turn this to stereo, the only thing I need to do is click on this icon and I can turn this to stereo. If I want to go back to mono, click again and I'm back to mono. It's that easy. I know that many people have been waiting for this and it's here and I couldn't be happier. Sip of coffee. 
because you have a lot of stuff to show you. The next thing that I want to show you is something that has been in my wish list for ages when it comes to Cubase. And I was extremely pumped when I saw that is now included. And this is the rain selection tool it is now available in the key editor and the drum editors. So let me show you how it works. If you don't know about the range tool, you really should know about it. It's one of the most powerful tools in Cubase, in my opinion. So as you can see, I have this synth part right here. It has MIDI notes. It has several controllers. There's a lot of stuff going on. So before, if I wanted to copy any section, okay, let's say I wanted to copy all these notes, I had to just select all of them hope that I haven't forgotten anything that's down here or up there. And then, you know, I would want to copy all the controllers and all these things. Now what I can do, I'm so happy about this. I can grab the range tool, see that? And now I can select my notes, hit command D, duplicate, just like that. And all the notes are selected and they're copied across. Or if I want to, I can select all the controllers as well. And now again, I can hit duplicate and as you can see, it has copied the notes with the controller data as well, especially for film composers that you have to deal with a lot of CC1, CC11 messages, uh, you know, many different controllers. This is going to be a lifesaver. Let's say that I played something else here and I haven't copied the controllers. Now I can copy the controllers in a very easy way. So I can select all of my controllers, let's say like this, hold shift and Command D, and now I can copy my controllers or I can move them, you know? I think I'm gonna make a dedicated video about this because this new feature is a big deal for me. And I've always been very vocal about the fact that we need this feature in the key and drum editors. And now it's here. The other big thing that producers and film composers will definitely appreciate is the fact that now we have a multi-part editor in the key editor. So let me show you very quickly. I'm going to go to my synth part right here and I'm going to open it in full view. And as you can see, okay, I have my synth right here. But what if I want to have a full overview of my MIDI parts so I can edit them and I can see them in relation to each other? You could do this before, but it was quite difficult to get to the right part. Now, what I can do is I can go here and as you can see, we have this part editor. And if you want to bring it up, you just click on this icon and now I can bring up everything that's in my arrangement. See, like this. And I can select anything that I want and start editing. So for example, if I go here, you will see that now I have the airy part right here. Now, if I go to this part, you will see that it gets selected. It gets in focus right here and now, or if I go here to my kick drum, again, focus, I try to make and I can play it. I try to make and I can select any configuration that I want. This is so fast. I don't think I will ever use a single channel mode anymore because it's so easy to go back to my kick drum right here, then move on to this one. And now I have my keys right here. And especially with big productions or big arrangements, this thing is going to be invaluable. Again, I might make a video to show you exactly how it works, because like I said, this video is going to be two or three hours long if I show you in detail all these new cool features. Let's move on to the next one. The next thing that I wanna show you is big. It's a big deal. It's a new plugin called Vocal Chain. And this plugin was designed so that you can put it on a vocal channel and you have everything you need in one place. I wouldn't be exaggerating, and this is my own personal opinion, if I said that if you use this plugin, it's gonna be really hard to feel that you need another plugin for a vocal. If you've watched any of my videos where I show you how to process vocals, I've done two of them up to this point, I think, and I'm using several plugins, you will see that quite a few of the tricks that I'm using on these videos are here in this plugin. It might be a coincidence, it might be that I had a little bit of input when it comes to this plugin. But one thing is for sure, you can find quite a few of my presets in this plugin straight out of the box. So I hope you enjoy them. Now, let me show you what's going on here. As you can see, this is a plugin that's comprised of several modules. So as you can see, we have an overview right here and you can have instant access to all the different modules. And let's see what else is there. So we have a clean section. This is the part, again, like I showed you on the videos that I've done for vocals, where you clean the vocal, you take care of any problems, 
before you move on to the next section, which is the character. So in the clean section, we have a cut filter, we have a gate, we have pitch correction, and I'm gonna show you some quick examples about this. We have a de module, we have a dynamic filter. Again, if you've watched my videos, you will see I use all these things. It's exactly the way that I use them. Then we have a compressor, and you will see that when it comes to the compressor, we have four different types of compression. So we have the Voxcom, transparent compressor, extreme, and black valve. Again, more about this later on. And the compressor can also be in parallel if I want to. We have the first EQ right here. And again, now not only we have the studio EQ, but we also have the P1A, more about this later, and the M5 EQ, again, more about this later. Then we move on to the character section and we have an exciter, a saturator, a compressor, a second dynamic filter, a second EQ, and a second de -esser. And all these modules can be repositioned as well. The only thing you need to do is drag and drop. The next thing that we have is the send section. And here is where you can find an imager if you want to make a vocal super wide. Again, I've made videos about all these things. So all these techniques that I've shown you over the years are right here in one plugin and then we have a delay again the delay it has a docker and you can set the delay to the reverb for example as you can see here and the reverb also has a docker and you can also send it to the delay so everything's there everything is right there i'm going to make a dedicated video about this where i dive deep into vocal chain so again make sure you're subscribed let's listen to this vocal and let's see how we can make it sound with just one plugin just vocal chain In the backseat of my car Hate me, hate me Nothing more to prove I will stop at nothing I got nothing left to lose Okay, so you can Delay and everything Let's do some crazy stuff with a pitch Ain't a sinner Have I gone too far I had the repercussions In the backseat of my car Hate me, hate me Make nothing it wider more to prove. I will stop at nothing, I got nothing left to lose Saint Austin, have I gone too far? I had the repercussions in the backseat of my car Hate me, hate me, nothing more to prove I will stop at nothing, I got nothing left to lose the next thing I want to show you is the new sampler track and I want to show you very quickly some cool things that you can do. I have a sample here, let's listen to it. This is one of the new samples that are included in Cubase 13. So what I've done is I've dropped it into a sampler track and now I can play it on my keyboard of course. Let's listen. How am I doing this? Now, this is possible because the new sampler track has the shaper envelopes that you can use for the filter envelopes, for the pitch envelope, and for the amp envelope. And as you can see, this is what I've done with the filter. And here's what I've done with the pitch. So this is the new shaper envelope. And if you're familiar with Halion, you will be right at home. You will know exactly what this is and how to use it. But basically what it allows you to do is you can create your own custom envelopes. The way it works is you grab your paint tool here, you select one of these waveforms or you can create your own user waveforms and then you select a value from here. Let's say go 64 notes, for example, and then you can start painting like this. Again, like I said, if you're familiar with Halion, you will know all about this because this was introduced in Halion 7 and the concept is exactly the same. Now, the second thing that you can do with the sampler track is that now we have new audio warp modes. So before we had the music and solo, now we also have spectral modes. So spectral, spectral HD, which is higher quality and spectral vocal, which is tailored for vocals. And what these modes will allow you to do is have a better sound quality when it comes to stretching, material, especially percussive material or vocals and when you want to pitch up and down. For the next thing that I want to show you, I need a microphone. And this is because in Cubase 13, we have a new vocoder plugin. So let's listen to it. This is the new vocoder, the plugin in Cubase 13. Oh yeah. So as you can see, I can even add vibrato 
to the vocoder sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can change the bands for the filter. You can, you can change the sound of the vocoder like this. You can add glide, and it's a lot of fun. And of course, video on how to use it coming up. The next one is Voxcom, and I want to talk about this compressor on a separate video, but basically this compressor is designed for vocals. You have a vocal, it doesn't sit well in the mix, you want to reach out for a compressor to make it sit nicely in the mix, this is the compressor that you want to reach out for. So let me show you on this vocal, it's extremely simple to use, it's literally one control. So let's play it. In the backseat of my car Hate me, hate me Nothing more to prove I will stop at nothing I got nothing left to lose and I'm using this arrangement because it has this big 808 and it's very dense and this is where it's a bit of a struggle to make vocals sit well in the mix. The second compressor is the Black Valve and this is completely different. This, I think, emulates the LA610 compressor and preamp. Let me show you how it works. Basically, this is a little bit different in the way that it operates. So again, I'm going to have a video, but what you can do is you can drive the input stage with the preamp and then you can start compressing. And this gives you a warm, very colorful compression style. Let's have a listen. First, I'm going to drive this vocal. Have I gone too far? I had the repercussions in the backseat of my car. Hate me, hate me. Nothing more to prove. I will stop at nothing. I got nothing left to lose. Saint Hudson. Have I gone too far? I had the repercussions in the backseat of my car. So as you can hear, it's very colorful. Like I said, if you're interested, let me know. I'm gonna make a video on how to use it and how to make the best out of it. A new addition in Cubase 13 and something that I wanted really badly is the inclusion of new EQs. And these are colorful EQs. These are not the clean EQs that we had in Cubase up to this point. So the frequency, the studio EQ. This is the EQ P1A and it's very clear that it emulates a Poltec EQ. And the second one is again the M5 and this emulates this very famous mid-range King EQ. So these are going to be great for vocals, for acoustic guitars on your master bass, kick drums, bass, you know, and tweaking your mid-range. And I'm glad that now we have some colorful, vibey EQs in Cubase. And I don't know if you've noticed this up to this point, but the next thing that I want to show you is the new channel tab. And the new channel tab is this section right here. This is not to be confused with the inspector that still exists. It didn't go away, so don't worry. What the new channel tab does is it gives you instant access to your mix without having to do what I've been doing all the time. The first thing I would just have my reflex on the E button on my keyboard, the E key, because I could bring up the channel settings. I was doing this all the time, maybe hundreds of times a day, or I would just open the mixer. Now I can have all the stuff that I need when it comes to mixing while I'm still arranging, like in this scenario, for example, everything is right here. So I have my routing there, I have my pre-gain, I have my inserts, I have my sends, I have my strip, I have my EQ. And again, the EQ curve, I can open it, I can do whatever I want, I can do my filtering. And then once I move my mouse, boom, it disappears, which is amazing. And the same thing goes like with the mix console, with the channel strip, if I activate, let's say, compressor and I open it, we have a pop-up window now and once I click away, boom, it disappears again. So for me, this is going to save me this thing that I've been doing all the time. Next is something really exciting. Now Cubase comes with a full orchestra straight out of the box. This is Iconica Sketch. Again, I'm going to make a video so I can show you how it sounds because I don't have time in this video. And don't let the sketch name fool you. This is an orchestra that sounds way better than some orchestras that I've played out there. And the other great thing is that it's super light on the computer resources. So in terms of CPU, you can have a full orchestral arrangement playing and your CPU will be absolutely fine. It's a very CPU efficient orchestra and it comes with brass, woodwinds, strings, everything. Let me know if you want a video on this. The next thing I want to show you is the new core pads and 
Again, there are many things that happen with the core pads that I won't have time to show you all of them in this video, but uh, let me show you what I have here. I have here my love theme preset from my Apollo expansion for Pad Shop. By the way, have you checked my expansion for Pad Shop? It's right here. And maybe you can also check the modern 80s drum kit. This way you can support the channel if you enjoy this video. Now, the first thing that you will notice with the new core pads is that you have way more core pads that you can add. So let's play some of these. We have many new presets when it comes to the new core pads and who knows, maybe some of them were created by someone that you know and you watch their video right now. Let me know if you can guess which ones of these presets I've designed. I've always seen the core pads as a really cool way that can get you started creating your own core progressions, but not in a way like a MIDI pack would do where you have some core progressions and then you just drop them. As you can see, when I play any chord now, the colors change which means the core pads give me ideas on where to go next. The more green, the more natural the transition, the more to the red, the more daring the chord progression will be. And now we can even have Roman numbers. This is really cool, especially if you're starting to learn music theory and music harmony, you can see that, okay, this is the first degree. And if I go here, this is the sixth. Again, very musical and I really appreciate this because this really helps people that have no idea about music theory and music harmony to get their teeth in there. And I'm gonna say one more thing about the core pads and I'm gonna move on because like I said, there are many things going on here is that you can change the key of the entire chord progression here. So if, for example, you don't want this to be in A flat major, but you want this to be in E flat major. You can do this, you can see the circle of fifths updates here, and this means that you have way more flexibility if you want to start a track on a different key, but you like the chord progressions. In Cupid 13, we also have new sample packs. So as you can see, we have Analog Wonder, we have Cinematic Electronic, we have Delicatessen, we have Midnight Dance, and we also have Soulful R&B vocals. So a lot of stuff to play with. Another thing that was improved is the step input. Now you can actually go and set your cursor and immediately you can start inputting notes. And if you want to change a uh, note length on the fly, you can just use the arrow keys on your keyboard and extend the note. So it's very easy to start inputting notes in the key editor, even if you're not a keyboard player. But if you want to add more notes on top of these in a polyphonic fashion, you can use the new MIDI step input. So I'm selecting these notes and I'm going to add three notes on top of this. While retaining the length of the note, it's going to follow everything. And this allows for really fast arranging. There's a new tap tempo function now. It's right here. You can tap with your mouse or with your keyboard and you can input a new tempo event wherever you have your cursor placed on. Another nifty thing that was added is that we have simplified CC recording. So I'm going to hit record and I'm going to record some CC1 events. So let's go like this. And you can see all these different points that get created. Now, when I hit stop, you will see that this gets simplified and this is way more manageable. Now, if you want to activate this, all you need to do is go right here and select type of new controller events set to ramp. So if you want the previous behavior with all the million points, I don't see the point of this, <laughs> no pun intended, you can still go back. But I think this is way more clean now. Other things that you can do, you can zoom horizontally or vertically using your mouse cursor on the Mac. So I'm holding command here and I can zoom horizontally. And if I hold command and shift, I can zoom in vertically as well. If you're working with video, you're going to like this, especially if you're a film composer. Now the video track can have versions. And this is one of the things that happen all the time. You know, you get a new cut, you get a new version, a new revision of a video, of a film, 
or of a commercial. Now we have different versions, so you can have multiple video files inside the same project and you can switch between them very easily. If you started using Cubase and you're used to the workflow of another DAW, you're gonna love the next one because now if you go to the transport bar, you will see there are different start modes and many of these modes are similar to what you will find on other DAWs. For example, you can start from selection start. This is pretty much what Pro Tools does. See, so I'm selecting an event and immediately my cursor starts playing from there. Or if I have my selection tool, I can play from this selection. This is pretty much like Pro Tools, right? The other thing that you can do is you can start from cycle start. This is, I think, more like logic, if I'm not mistaken. You can start from the cursor position, which is the default in Cubase, and you can also start from selection or cycle start. The other thing that especially Pro Tools users are very used to is the return to start position on stop. This was always an option in Cubase, but now it's easier to find because it's in the transport menu. Way more options now. Another improvement is the new key commands window. Now this is again, more modern. It's way easier to find what you're looking for. For example, if you want to find a command, let's say group, you will see that I have everything that's related to group. And if I want to see if I have a command assigned, I can go let's say in my case, Alt Shift G, and you will see that immediately it finds that command assigned to this keystroke. And now you can also add your commands on the macros straight away in this window before you had to find the macro right here. And it was kind of cumbersome. Now it's way easier and we can see our assigned commands, our customized commands and our unassigned commands. This is way more simple. Another thing that is going to be a huge time saver for me and it's one of those things that can get lost in such a plethora of new features is that let's say you have a selection here, right? And I want to extend this selection to the next hit. Now what I can do is I can go edit, select, and then I can say enlarge range to next hit point. And when I do this, check what happens. It does exactly that. So it's very easy to make selections and this way I can cut I can create nice edits without having to, you know, be very, very analytical here. I'm pretty sure many people are going to miss this function. So I'm telling you, now you know. Another small thing is that now you can use a shortcut, add a marker and rename that marker straight away. So if you see here on my key commands, we have a new key command called add and edit cycle marker on active track. And I have a shortcut there, it's control and M. And now what I can do is I can go here, hit that shortcut and you will see that immediately the cycle marker is created and I can name this marker straight away. Boom, right here. If you're working with markers, you're going to appreciate this. You can also rename events super fast. Now, if I click on this kick drum, for example, before, if I want to rename this event, I would have to go here, click, and then rename it. Now what I can do is I can hit a shortcut and then I can say base, for example, for some reason. Or you can right click and select rename selected events. And now you can rename it straight away. Another very powerful thing that many people will appreciate, I'm pretty sure, is that now you can have any channel in your arrangement as an input for recording. For example, let's say I have this audio track. As you can see, if I go here to my inputs, I can see not only my physical inputs on my audio interface, but I can also use groups as my inputs. I can use effects channels. I can use track instruments as inputs. So I can record on this track the output of any other channel in my project window. This is going to be very handy for people that work with analog gear and they want to record everything on the fly. The last thing that I want to show you is that we have a new user interface for the MIDI plugins. So here I have the Arpachi 5, but let's open one of my favorites. This is the Beat Designer. And as you can see, now they look more modern. So there you go, my friends. I tried to make this video as short as humanly possible, but there was a lot of stuff to talk about, as you could see. I'm going to have many more videos coming up, so make sure you subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, you can use either the Super Thanks button right here, or you can check out my instruments, the Modern 80s Drum Kit, or the Apollo Expansion for Patch Shop. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about Cubase 13. I'll see you on the next one. Have fun. Bye-bye.